In 1876, Amos and Annie Curtis Bowman reached Fidalgo Island. Amos surveyed the waterfront. He liked what he saw. On examining the harbor for terminal purposes, which was the first work I did here, I was agreeably surprised to find every condition around Anna Cordes Place nearly perfect. And in the spring of 1877, I purchased it from Miss Maud Stevens of Boston, a sister of General Hazard Stevens, for the sum of $1,000. Amos was a visionary. He could see a town carved from the forest, a big town. Amos Bowman described it as it was going to be the New York of the West. And uh, when they laid out uh, the, uh, the city, they laid it out to be the same size as the city of Boston. If he was a visionary, he was also a romantic. He named the town of his dreams after the woman he loved, Annie Curtis. There are conflicting stories about how it came to be called Anna Curtis. One story is that the Anacortes, he just corrupted it, modified it to a certain extent to fit in with the Fidalgo Island, the Spanish influence. Or maybe it was a typo. It was thought that, uh, that uh, Amos was going to name the city Annie Curtis, and he, in communicating with the Postal Department in Washington, D.C., they thought because of the Spanish influence through here, it was Anacortes, and that was the way it came, and it stayed forevermore. That's the legend of how it got the name Anna Curtis rather than Anna Curtis. Old timers, when I came out here, were still referring to this town as Annie Curtis. Anna Curtis was an ideal destination for the sailing ships that rode the prevailing westerlies, the length of the Strait of Juan de Fuca to the deep protected waters of the Guaymas Channel. Amos visualized a world-class port where sail met rail. On land, he just happened to own. He was surveying for the Canadian Railroad. He was a mining engineer, surveyor, reporter, very versatile and apparently very charismatic. Well, there was always a rumor that Anacortes, because of its seaport, w was a strong possibility to become a terminus for a railroad line. Amos took advantage of the power of the press to promote his grandiloquent vision of the New York of the West, the Manhattan of the Pacific. And he established uh, the town's first newspaper, the Northwest Enterprise, which he used as a tool uh, to uh, communicate with the uh, power brokers uh, uh, throughout the nation. Amos was entirely in favor of advocacy journalism. One of his most celebrated journalistic feats was the publication of a map. He made an incredible map, and that was circulated through the media of his newspaper all around the country. Any place where he thought there might be someone interested in Anacortes as a, a site for an industry or a rail line. Amos just was able to convince all these people that this was just the most perfect location for everything. Amos Bowman uh, realized that uh, we were kind of sitting in the catbird seat, and uh, there was a map that came out when, in 1890 when he was uh, making his big push for Anacortes uh, that showed Anacortes as being 1 16th of an inch off being dead center in the planet. 